country, many places will be dry, and the outlook for the weekend, John and Sally, is dry too. Back to you both. That sounds very good. Matt, thank you very much indeed. See you later. Now, for hundreds of years, church bells have rung out to proclaim special events, as well as to call people to worship. But new recruits to bell ringing are apparently in decline, and with just 10 weeks to go to the coronation of King Charles, a campaign is underway this morning to try to fill the vacancies. Joe Black has been speaking to those who will be responsible for showing newcomers the ropes. <laughs> the unmistakable sound of church bells has been part of the soundscape across towns and cities for centuries. They help us celebrate, commemorate, and are a weekly call to worship. Now, with just over 10 weeks to go until the coronation, there is a shortage of bell ringers who will ring for the king. And so the race is on to find and train people up. All yours, that hand stroke needs stretch and pull through. St. Lawrence's in Ipswich, a deconsecrated church is now a community hub. We're told that bells here are the oldest entire ring of five bells in the country, dating back to the 1400s. And the weekly ringing session held here on a Wednesday lunchtime is today doubling up as a training exercise for some who have come to answer this particular coronation call. We want to make sure that there are ringers for every church so that we can all ring out for ring for the king for the coronation. But some of our beginners here today learned because of the Queen's Jubilee and they wanted to be able to ring for that. And then a lot of them rang when the Queen died. Um, so we've had this um, constant teaching of beginners right the way through since that original push. Another day, another church and another practice session. As the day starts to fade over St. Clement's, the group is back on the ropes again. The team here vary in age, beliefs, backgrounds, and experience. They'll rise in, so longer pull at both strokes. Freya, an A-level student, is just 17, and has only been ringing since November. Fiona, an occupational therapist, is 55. And even though she's new to this hobby, her late grandfather was an established bell ringer for many years. So when we ring rounds in a minute, you can control that. And 61-year-old grandfather, Yarnis, is a Soka Buddhist and used to bell ring in the early 90s. Now, after a 30-year absence, he's back in a ringing chamber. I saw some advert um, about uh, them needing more um, bell ringers to ensure that all the churches were ringing for the King's coronation. And because he's such a great environmentalist, and I'm an environmentalist too, um, I thought I'd come back and um, ring for the coronation. I was surprised. I thought I'd have to start right from the very beginning again. But the basic control of the bell, very basic control of the bell, was uh, a bit like riding a bike. Um, but um, I'm still very much focusing on just trying to fully control that bell. I think my grandfather would be extremely proud and to be ringing for the coronation he would be dead chuffed. At the moment I'm excited about it I can't imagine that I'm going to be quite ready but I think I will I hope I will but yeah it will be you know it's a once in a lifetime opportunity isn't it really? It'll be really amazing um, enjoyable something to remember. I'd encourage younger people to really get involved with it um, because it is really enjoyable and you make lots of friends very quickly. But with a shortage of ringers and teachers, is bell ringing seen, perhaps unfairly, as a bit old fashioned? No, it's super cool. It's absolutely super cool. And no one would ever believe that it wasn't. <laughs> there is still enough time to learn before Coronation Day. And these new members know they will be part of something historic. And they hope to keep on ringing for many more years to come. Joe Black, BBC News, in Ipswich. Oh. Super cool. Super cool. Fancy giving it a go? Well, good for your arm strength, That's I imagine. Good, yeah. yeah. Cheaper than gym membership. Yes. Uh, All fun. Maybe we should... Sounds better. <laughs> Uh, yeah, after a bit of practice. Let's find out later how it works. Uh, later in the programme, we're going to speak to Joe, uh, who's going to be live with some bell ringers at St Paul's Church in Birmingham. Uh, we can see them maybe having a live lesson. Yeah. 
Let's have a look at this morning's papers, shall we? At 21 minutes past six, we're starting with the Times. Several front pages focus on the war in Ukraine. Times reporting that Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, is ready to abandon the arms control treaty with the United States. It's OK to be scared, but we fight. That is the Mirror's headline this morning as it carries an image there of two women standing between burnt-out tanks 